بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We as parents in general and as fathers in particular have a great responsibility towards our children and with mixed emotions sometimes it's a bit difficult to determine how to deal with our children and the best way to know how to deal with them is to look at the greatest teacher of all sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he used to deal with his children the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first of all stated that for a father for a teacher for a brother for any individual when dealing with the children you have to be merciful the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he is not from among us who does not have mercy on our youngsters, our children, and is not respectful to our elders. And the youngsters have a very important role in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, as he gave them a lot of interest. And this begins from day one. Well, actually, it begins earlier than day one. It starts from choosing your spouse because she will be responsible for upbringing your child. So if you want to have a good child, you should have a good wife. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ ordered us to select and to choose the one who has religion. And once this happens, even in the warmest moment of intimacy, when a person is about to have intercourse with his wife, the Prophet tells us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a dua that we must say so that shaitan could not harm our children. And the dua everybody knows, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaytan wa jannib shaytana ma razaqtana. Once you say this, then with the grace of Allah, he would not be able to harm your child. And we also care for our children once they are born. By showing signs of jubilation and happiness, especially when a female is born, unlike the mushrikeen, unlike the idol worshippers who once they are given the glad tidings of the birth of a daughter their faces turn dark Allah says and when the news of the birth of a female child is brought to any of them his face becomes dark and he is filled with inward grief the Prophet goes on والسلام, to tell us how to select names of our children. And he tells us that the best of names is Abdullah and Abdurrahman. And these two beautiful names relate the child to their Lord, Ar-Rahman, to Allah, the Almighty, Azza wa Jal. And on the seventh day, we're ordered to circumcise the boy we're ordered to shave the head of the newborn and we're ordered to sacrifice two rams for a, a, a male child and one ram for a, male, for a female child as sign of gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal and showing how happy you are. If you look at the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, you will never find him and you will never find a report or a hadith ever stating that he had spanked a child or that he has punished a child or cursed him 
for any given reason because he was sent as a mercy to mankind sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam unfortunately we have forgotten the basics of islam and you find in our household that violence is controlling we never speak to our children except in an admonishing admonishing uh, 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 tone without saying are you stupid can't you understand how many times do i have to tell you this or without pushing them or spanking them or insulting them in front of others and these are against all basics of islamic upbringing the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam once kissed al hasan his grandchild the son of ali the son of fatima and in his yard in his court there was al aqra ibn habis and he said with astonishment prophet of allah you kiss your grandchild by allah i have 10 of my own offspring i have 10 sons i've never kissed any one of them in my life and the prophet looked at him and said alayhi salatu wasalam he who does not have mercy will not have Allah's mercy upon him. And this is a grave warning to us. If you don't have this mercy to your own child, then Allah Azza wa will not be merciful to you. And in another narration, the Prophet told him, Aslam, what can I do to you if Allah has taken the mercy out of your heart? The Prophet والسلام, once was on the pulpit giving a sermon to the Muslims. Imagine the whole Muslim Ummah is sitting in the masjid and the Prophet is giving them uh, uh, nasiha, giving them advice, is preaching them. And all of a sudden he sees Al Hassan and Al Hussein wearing two red garments, barely able to walk, three years, four years of age, maybe less, entering the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ interrupted his speech, came down from the pulpit and carried them and he recited to the companions the ayah in the Quran, your wealth and your children are only a trial. fitna. The Prophet is confessing, I can't help it, I, I love these two grandchildren of mine, may Allah be pleased with them. And Likewise, this was not with the boys alone. Even his granddaughter, Abu Qatada, may Allah be pleased with him, tells us that the Prophet ﷺ once came out to the prayer carrying Umamah bint Abil As ibn al Rabi'ah. Umamah is the daughter of his daughter Zainab. So she is his granddaughter. So he started praying carrying her on his shoulder. And whenever he bowed or prostrated, he placed her on the ground. Whenever he stood up, he again put her on his shoulder throughout the whole prayer. What does this express to you? Imagine if I, an imam of a masjid, went to my congregation and was carrying one of my children or one of my grandchildren. How would the people react? What do the people nowadays do when children come into the masjid? Imagine grown-up men shouting and screaming in the masjid, don't bring your children, don't do this. Yaqi, who are you to say this? Do you know more than the Prophet ﷺ? It shows you how far away we are from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, a hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ once prayed, and he came to the prayer carrying Al-Hasan or Al-Hussein. The narrator is doubtful which one of the two. And the Prophet started the prayer and in one of his prostrations he prolonged it so long that the companions feared that he died in prayer. So one of them left his head to find the Prophet prostrating with Al-Hasan on his back mounting him like a, 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 a ride. And when the Prophet concluded his prayer they told him, oh, Prophet of Allah, you did something that yani, uh, um, was too long and we thought that something had happened to you or that maybe Allah Azza wa is revealing wahi to you. And the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, my grandson 
took me as a ride and I didn't want to interrupt him. This is from the Prophet ﷺ, prolonging the prayer which everybody else is praying behind him for the sake of the heart of this young infant, this young child, which shows the importance of taking care of the feelings of our children. The Prophet ﷺ, despite his political and social status as the head of the state, whenever he passed by children playing, he would come and read salam to them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Nowadays, if I'm walking in the street and someone meets me, I expect him to start the salam because I'm the sheikh, I'm the elder, I'm this and that. This is arrogance. This is a disease in the heart. You should come down to the people. And the Prophet used to come down and greet the children because of the mercy and the love he had in his heart. He used to do this not as a public relation gimmick. He doesn't want to gain votes. He did this because he was merciful. This was his nature, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we should strive to make it our nature. Uh, our, our nature. The Prophet والسلام, used to play with the children and used to give his condolences to a child. Aba Umair, a young child of four years of age or five, who is a brother of Anas ibn Malik. The Prophet used to visit their house often and he had a small bird in a cage and all of a sudden the bird died and the child was in grief and he was sad and the Prophet whenever he saw him he would joyfully play with him and say Aba Umair ماذا فعل النغير and it rhymes Aba Umair the child's name what did the small bird do as form of condoling him he used to call children and he used to give them gifts. He was once brought a garment and he said, where is Um Khalid? And who was about five years of age, a young uh, female companion. And when they brought her, he gave her that dress to wear. And so he did that to Usama ibn Zayd. Ibn Harith, may Allah be pleased with him. Uh, Zayd, as you know, was the adopted son of the Prophet son before adoption was uh, uh, abrogated and Usama was his son. So Hakim ibn Hizam, may Allah be pleased with him, once brought the garment of the Yazin, the king of Yemen. So you can imagine that it's not an antique, it is a very exotic uh, 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 dress that only is worn by emperors and kings. So he bought it with a large amount of money and he gave it to the Prophet so that the Prophet would wear it and the Prophet didn't even look at it he said where is Usama and Usama was brought to him and he gave him that beautiful garment to wear he used to alayhi salatu wassalam react to the cry and to the weeping of children in a prayer once while he was praying he heard a child cry so he hastened to f to finish his prayer quickly and the companions were astonished because of the speed of the prophet once he concluded the prayer he said i heard the child crying and i was merciful for his mother's heart so i concluded my prayer quickly so that she can attend him and by Allah, this is the mercy in the Prophet's heart والسلام, that we lack. He did not reprimand the women by finishing the prayer and saying, Oh women, well, don't you fear Allah? Don't bring your children to the mosque. No, he did not do that. He did not reprimand the child as so many ignorant elders do in the masjid. A child is a child. If he shouts, if he runs in the masjid, this is his nature. You, do you expect a five-year-old child to sit 
idle in the masjid and write a thesis, for example. He's not normal. If you see a child sitting on a chair, not speaking, not playing, not doing anything for a couple of hours, this child is autistic probably, or he has a problem. This is not normal. You have to look into it. So we have to understand the nature of our children. The Prophet ﷺ used to be approached by a, by a young girl and she would say, Oh Prophet of Allah, I have a problem and I need to address it to, with you and I want to talk to you. And the Prophet ﷺ would give her an appointment. She comes and she takes his hand and she drags him in the streets of Medina complaining about her problem. And the pro Prophet is walking behind her ﷺ, listening to her problem. He used to, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pay a lot of attention, which we should do, to the feelings of the children, to the feelings of the children, especially and specifically when it comes to jealousy. And we know what happened with Yusuf Prophet, the Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, with his brothers and how they got rid of him because of the love of his father, Prophet Yaqub, peace be upon him, who could not conceal and hide his feelings towards Yusuf. The Prophet ﷺ used to warn us from being unfair when it comes to gifts with our children because this disturbs the psychological aspects of the child when he sees his parent preferring one over the other. And in Hadith Naman of Ibn Bashir, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, when Al Bashir ibn Sa'd gave al numan his son, a gift. His wife was a wise woman. She said, I will not accept your gift to my son until you take the Prophet as your witness. So he went to the Prophet and told him, I gave my son al numan a gift. And my wife told me to make you a witness. So the Prophet said, والسلام, did you give all of your children a similar gift? And Naaman said, uh, 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 Sa'ad said, no, I did not. Al-Bashir ibn Sa'ad, the father of Naaman, said, no, I did not, O Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet said, والسلام, do not make me a witness over such injustice. Fear Allah and be fair to your offspring, to your children. Why would the Prophet do such a thing, alayhi salatu because if you favor one over the other, he will ha hold feelings of, uh, uh, of hatred, of envy. He will have a grudge against his own brother, which the Prophet ﷺ, uh, does not want. And there is a difference between gifts and maintenance. What a child needs is different than what you give as a gift. And this is not the time to discuss this. Uh, Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, also tells us an incident that we rarely give attention to. While the Prophet was sitting, one of his companions was sitting next to him. So his boy, his child, came in. And this companion held the boy, kissed him, hugged him, and put him in his lap. And moments later, the man's daughter, who was almost the same age, also came in. And the man took the girl and put her next to him. The Prophet ﷺ looked at the man and said, you were not fair with both of them. The boy you kiss and hug and put him in your lap, and the girl you put her on your side, this is not fair and this is not part of the Islamic teachings of how to treat the children. Despite his love and mercy to the children, this did not stop the Prophet ﷺ from teaching them, from educating them. And we all know that the Prophet ﷺ, you know the dua of Qunut, Allahumma hadina fi man hadaytu afina fi man afayt. We always say this in Ramadan, in Witr, in uh, uh, Taraweeh, etc. Who relayed this hadith to us? Believe it or not, it was Al-Hasan ibn Ali, a seven-year-old child who came to the Prophet and said, O Prophet of Allah, teach me something to say in my prayer, in my witr. And the Prophet taught him the dua. 
And this shows us that we should cater for our children's needs and questions. When your son asks you something, don't ignore it and treat him as if he doesn't understand. Give him weight. Give him size. Give him importance in life so that he would be able to, re uh, to act positively, insha'Allah. Ibn Abbas tells us that when he was a, a, a youngster, 10 years of age, the Prophet used to uh, uh, take him behind him on his right, and he used to advise him, and he used to give him nasiha, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the great hadith we know, Ihfadillaha yahfadh, Ihfadillaha tajitu tujahak, and look what happened to Abdullah ibn Abbas. He became one of the greatest scholars of all times, may Allah be pleased with him. Also, whenever a child did something wrong, the Prophet would advise him, would correct him, but with love, with care, with mercy. The Prophet وسلم, in the hadith, Amr ibn Abi Salama used to eat with the Prophet and he was his stepson. And once the Prophet saw him eat and he said, Oh boy, Ya Ghulam, Sammillah, say Bismillah. Eat with your right hand and eat from in what is in front of you. Because he used to eat with his left and he used to eat from whatever it was uh, um, in the dish, whether it was in front of him or not. And he would not take that lightly and say, oh, he's young, he's a sukke. No, he would وسلم, advise him and teach him uh, and correct him. Likewise, when Al-Hasan uh, um, took a date that he found on the ground. He, the Prophet والسلام, told him, kikh, kikh, meaning that this is not for you, you are from Al Al Bayt, you cannot eat charity. And he took it out from his mouth. The Prophet والسلام, used to correct mistakes whenever he sees them, he would not ignore them. Once he heard children mocking the adhan. Imagine, this happens from children. They were playing, so one of them was calling the adhan in a mocking way, making fun out of it. And the Prophet told them, bring me that person who's making that adhan and making mock fun of it. So they brought him, that, and the child was Abu Mahzura. He was from Mecca, and this was after the conquest of Mecca. And these boys were just recently reverted. And the Prophet wiped over his head and over his chest. And he said, you have a beautiful voice. I will teach you the proper Adhan. And he taught him the Adhan. And he became the Mu'adhin of Mecca. He didn't admonish him. He didn't punish him. The Prophet said, on the contrary, he redirected him. And this is what you should, you should do as a father. You should redirect your child, advise him, give him nice uh, uh, nasiha, so that Allah Azza wa Jal would open his heart to that with the grace of Allah. The Prophet used to order us to take care of our children by instruct them, instructing them to perform forms of worship at a very early age, because this would stick in their heads and they will be brought up on worshiping Allah. Didn't he say, instruct your children to pray when they're seven and spank them when they're ten, meaning if they do not pray? Three years is far more than enough to have our children accustomed to prayer. And in this three, day, uh, th three years, 365 days, five prayers a day, you never uh, back out. You're always adamant to have your child pray, uh, encouraging him, come my son, come my daughter, yes, let's go, without any punishment or reprimanding for three years. And then when he's 10 years of age, if he still continues to be reluctant in praying, you can spank him slightly, not beat the heck out of him or break his bones or put scars in his face. No, you have to be fair and, and, and know how to do this. Uh, the companions used to order their children when they're seven years of age to fast or six years of age. And if they felt really 
hungry or weak, they would make them fast until Zuhr time and give them food or encourage them to fast until Asr and then give them a gift. So this is far part of their training. And we know about Ibn Abbas and how he used to pray night prayer when the Prophet was at his aunt's house, Maymuna, may Allah be pleased with her. He, he used to pray at night prayer and Ibn Abbas used to stand next to him and pray with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet وسلم, used to trust the children, empower the children. Do you imagine this? Amr ibn Salama, may Allah be pleased with him. He was six or seven years of age when his people came and accepted Islam. And he was the most learned among them to memorize the Quran. So the Prophet allowed him to lead them in prayer, to lead men, to lead warriors, because he memorized more Quran than they did. So in short, as a parent, what you choose today is what will reflect on our future with the grace of Allah. How you choose to deal with your child, you will see this when you grow old. You will see the impact of what you have said or done on your child's behavior. You will see that on the community that would benefit, inshallah, from that. Our children today are tomorrow's men. They are tomorrow's leaders. Nations rise on the shoulders of our children today. And if we take care of them, if we cater for their needs, if we teach them the religion properly and teach them how to implement this religion as pleases Allah Azza wa Jal, if we protect them from whatever harms them physically, mentally, or religiously, and try our level best to upbring them as strong men, with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, we would find them effective, and we would find them fruitful, and they would be a satisfaction to our hearts and to our eyes whenever we look at them. So it is a long investment, it is our responsibility. It is not something that we have chosen, but rather it is something that Allah has entrusted us with. If you look at your child in this way and through the spectrum of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you will manage with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal to have fulfilled what the Prophet ﷺ entrusted us with and you will insha'Allah be successful in having an offspring that would benefit you even when you are buried in your grave. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, when the man dies, all of his good deeds are over, are cut, are discontinued, except of three. And he mentioned one of them, a righteous offspring that he or she supplicates and invokes Allah for you. With this I conclude my talk. I pray to Allah the Almighty that He grants you and me and all of the Muslim Ummah children that would carry the burden and the responsibility of this Ummah, that would cater for the needs of this Ummah, that would take this Ummah from the ground level that she is in into the highest levels of success and honor. May Allah Azza wa grant you and me offspring that would become scholars in Islam, that would become good practicing Muslims who would give the best illustration of Islamic morals and, uh, and, and ethics to the whole world. Ameen. And with this, I leave you fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.